Hi, and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this video, we're gonna be working with pattern Simplicity 4762, which you can see right here in the corner. We're actually gonna be doing the tie, which is view E here. And to find this pattern, you just need to go to a fabric or craft store that supplies patterns, look for the cabinet that says Simplicity, and then they're all in numerical order. So then you just look up 4762. You can also find it directly on the Simplicity website and we'll provide the link on our website so you can order from them directly. The one thing you need to be careful when you get pattern envelopes is you're getting the correct size. Fortunately, this has all sizes in this envelope. It has men and it has boys. And for the tie, you'll see the men's size and the boy's size, and it's all one size, so we don't have to worry about it for this particular pattern. So we're gonna show you an example of the tie, and then we're gonna get started looking at the back of the pattern envelope to find out what supplies we're going to need. Here's an example of the necktie we're gonna be creating in this tutorial. So let's get started. When you flip the pattern envelope over, the first thing you're gonna notice is right up here at the top, there's gonna to be a box that say fabrics. This is the recommended fabrics they use for the project. So you'll see there'll be a series of different kind of cloths that would be appropriate for this project, and this is mostly talking about the vest. But if you look over here, you'll say E also in, so this is view E, which is the tie, and they're suggesting suede silks and rayons, but you could probably use other types of fabric at all, whatever you feel comfortable working with when creating your tie. Underneath, you're gonna see notions. This is additional items that you're gonna need in order to make your project. So the first thing is thread. So you're gonna need matching thread with whatever fabric you're using. And we can go ahead and ignore these other parts because the views A, B, C, and D is for the vest. So since for this video, we're not doing the vest, we're only doing the tie, the only notion we need is thread. Next, we're gonna move on to see how much fabric we're gonna need in order to make the tie. So I just look down until I say E tie, and it says 45 or 60. This is the width of the fabric. So it's telling us 45 or 60 width fabric, inch fabric. It doesn't matter, you're gonna to need to get the same amount. So if I'm doing the boys tie, I'm gonna need three quarters of a yard. If I'm doing the men's tie, I'm gonna need one yard. And again, that's one yard regardless if it's 45 inches or 60 inch width fabric. Underneath you see interfacing. So in addition to the fabric, you're gonna need some lightweight fusible interfacing. For the boy, you're gonna need five eighths of a yard. And for the men's, you need seven eighths of a yard of fusible interfacing. So once you have those items, uh, we're gonna pull it all together and show you everything you're gonna need in order to make the tie. Here's an overview of the supplies that we need in order to make tie E. We need our fabric, lightweight interfacing, simplicity patterns 4762, fabric marker, sewing gauge, scissors, pins and needle, I have matching thread and then I have a contrasting thread because we'll be doing some basting stitches and I like to have something that's easy to spot out. And then the last few things that we need are our iron and our sewing machine. So now we're gonna get to prepping our pieces for cutting them out and laying them on our fabric. The next thing we're gonna do is pull out the first page of our pattern directions, which I have right here. And you'll see on one side, we have all the pictures of the views, and over here we have the diagram. So this is a diagram of the actual pattern pieces. Now to find out which pattern pieces we need, we need to first pick out our view, and again, we're doing tie E. And if you look underneath these pattern pieces, you'll see right here, there's a list of the names of the pattern pieces, and behind each name, there's a letter. These letters correspond to the view. So this one is A and B front, that means it's vest A and B. Since I'm doing E, the tie, I only need to find the pattern pieces here that have an E after it. So right here, I have tie E, tie E, interfacing E, interfacing E. So that means I need pattern pieces 9, 10, 11, 12. And if I look up here, we'll have the numbers. Here's 11 and 12 and nine and 10. So I need to find the pattern pieces nine and 10, 11 and 12 in my tissue paper pattern pieces and cut out those. So now we're gonna break out the tissue paper so we can show you what those actual pattern pieces look like. 
Your pattern pieces will be printed out on large sheets of tissue paper just like this one. So you're gonna look at each individual pattern and look for the number and you'll see right here, this is pattern piece number nine. So this is one of the pieces that we need. Now you have to be careful since there's the men's version of the tie and the boys version of the tie that you're cutting out the right one. And if you look underneath the name Simplicity, you'll see it says men. So if you need the boys, you need to look for another number nine and look for the one that's a boys underneath the Simplicity name. So once you have it, you can go ahead and start cutting out along this outside line. And you'll notice on pattern piece number nine that there'll be these lines on the inside and then there's one going across this way. We're gonna transfer these lines to our pattern pieces, but you're not gonna cut anywhere near them. You're gonna cut only on these outside lines. We're gonna get a little closer so you can see this information here. And then we'll also show you how we go about cutting out along the lines and cutting out our notches. Here's a closer look of that one area. So here we have the pattern number, number nine, and you'll see right here underneath Simplicity, it says men. So if we needed to find the boys number nine, we would look for the one that says boys here. Also, it has the pattern name. This is tie, view E. So that's just confirmation that we're cutting out the right one. And here, cut one. This is in regards to how many pieces we need to cut out of our fabric. So out of our fabric, we would only cut this piece one time. So now we're gonna get a little closer and show the actual cutting lines. Before you start cutting out your pattern pieces, if you want, you can iron your tissue paper in order to smooth it out a little bit better. Just make sure you use a cool iron so we don't singe the tissue paper. So once I'm ready to start cutting out, you're gonna cut out this outside line here and you're gonna notice in some parts there's gonna be these little triangles right at the edge. This is considered a notch. I need to indicate this notch when I'm cutting out so then I can go ahead and transfer it to my fabric pieces. Now some people, they just cut inward and they cut the little inverted triangle. I like to cut an actual triangle that sticks out so it kind of sticks outside of the tissue paper line. It's just easier for me to remember I need to cut it in my fabric. So you have a choice. You can either cut right on top of the line or just alongside of the line. I like to cut alongside of my line just so if I use the pattern multiple times, I don't have to worry about my pattern piece continually getting smaller because I keep cutting into it. So I'm just gonna go right alongside the line and when I get to my notch, I'm just gonna lift this up and cut outwards like that. And then continue right alongside the line. So I'm gonna cut out all my pattern pieces and then we're gonna move on to placing them on our fabric. After you cut out your pattern pieces, you're then gonna to wanna to consult these diagrams that show you how to lay them out onto your fabric. If you're doing the boys, it's gonna be at the bottom of the first page. For the men's, it's at the top of the second page. You're also gonna to wanna to check to make sure you're doing the right view. I'm looking here and it says E tie, so this is tie E, so I know this is the one I need to use. Now here it has a series of inches, 44, 45, or 58 and 60, but it has one diagram. So again, this is telling us it doesn't matter if you have 44 or 60 inch fabric, it's gonna have the same layout for all of them. You'll see here it says single thickness. What this means is you're gonna take your fabric and you're just gonna lay it out flat. There's not gonna be any fold and you're gonna lay out pieces nine and 10. So for your fabric, you only need to use those two pieces and you're gonna lay them out just as you see them here. The salvage is the end of the fabric and you're gonna have a salvage here and a salvage here. These ends here should be where they cut it at the fabric store. Down here, you're gonna see interfacing. So this is how we're gonna lay out the interfacing for pieces 11 and 12. Again, it's single thickness, so you're just gonna lay out the, the interfacing flat, no folds, and lay out pieces 11 and 12 just as you see them here. So we have two pieces we're cutting out of our fabric, nine and 10, two pieces we're cutting out of our interfacing, 11 and 12. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my fabric and my pattern pieces and show you what this looks like. Here I have pieces nine and 10 on my fabric, nine and 10, and my fabric not folded in half, just laid out flat. 
my salvage is down here. And you'll notice you have these arrows up here on your pattern piece. This is for the grain line. In this particular case, our pattern pieces are laid on the bias, which means they're going diagonally across our grain line. So for these arrows, they're actually going parallel to the salvage. And you just wanna make sure that your arrows are going in the same direction. So this arrow is matching this arrow. Once you have them placed, you're then gonna grab your straight pins and you're going to pin your fabric to your pattern pieces and the pins go parallel to the edge of the pattern piece. So I'm not taking my pins and putting them in perpendicular. So going this way, because then when I'm trying to cut out my pattern pieces, I might run into the problems of my pins being in the way when I'm trying to cut it out. So that's why I'm gonna take this out and place them so they're going right alongside my cut line, like that. Once I finish pinning my pieces, I'm then gonna cut them out just as I did cutting out my pattern pieces. I'm gonna go right alongside my line and make sure that I cut out all my notches. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for this one and I'm gonna show you real quick on the interfacing. Here you can see I've replicated the diagram for the interfacing. I have pieces 11 and 12. And just as I did with the fabric, I'm gonna take my pins and place them parallel to the edge of the pattern piece and cut right along the line. Once we have all our pieces cut out, we're ready to move on to the next step. Before we start sewing, the last thing we need to do in prepping is transfer our lines here on our pattern pieces and the dots that you have here within to our fabric piece. Now you only have to worry about this with pieces 9 and 10. 11 and 12 on our interfacing don't have these. So here's 10, and I'll just demonstrate on 10, but again, you're going to do it on 9. You have a line here, here, going diagonally here at the end. And then you have three dots right behind your notch. So you have two small ones on the side and then a big one in the middle. These all need to be transferred to your fabric piece. The easiest way to do this is I like to get my straight pins. And I'll just go through right in the center of the line. I'm gonna do this top line as a demonstration. And um, I'll go straight through the line with my straight pin through the pattern and through the fabric. And then maybe I'll do another one about four inches away, same thing. And I'll just keep doing this just until I get to the end of the line. So let's pretend I'm already at the end. I'm then gonna flip this over so now I can see the fabric, get my fabric marker, and I'm just gonna make a mark on my fabric right where the pin is coming out of the fabric because I know at that point, that's where my line is. So I'm just doing a few marks, and of course I would do this all the way down until the end of the line. Remove my straight pins now. And then the easiest thing is if you have a straight ruler, all you do is just line up your marks, take your fabric marker, draw a line until you get to the end. The same thing with these marks here at the end, the dots. I just put my straight pin right through the center of each dot, flip it over, and then on the fabric side, I make a mark. Obviously for the large dot in the center, you wanna make that one a little bit bigger than the two side ones. So let me flip this back over. As you can see, I've already done one line here. I've done the line here, and I just need to finish doing this, do my other piece, and then we'll actually move on to the directions and start sewing our tie. Now we're ready to get to the directions and putting our tie together. So you're gonna pull out the sheets of directions and they're gonna look something like this. You need to make sure that you find the one that has the heading of the item you're making, such as our case is tie E. Now it doesn't say men or boys because it's gonna be the same direction regardless of which one you're making. The important thing is we need to take notice of this note up here, which says stitch in 3 8 inch seam allowance. So this is gonna be our seam allowance anytime it tells us to stitch a seam or stitch two pieces together. Usually in commercial patterns, it's 5 8 inch of a seam allowance, but in this case, it's smaller than that. So we definitely wanna remember that. 
So if you look at your directions, you'll see you have pictures on one side, written directions on the other side, and each one has a number next to it, which relates to the one on the other side. So this direction goes with this picture. So what I like to do is read this, look at the picture, and then that tells me what I'm going to need to do. So we're gonna start with number one, and it says transfer fold lines to right side of tie sections with hand basting as shown. So we've already went ahead and transferred our fold lines. That's what we just did in the last step. So the next step is right on those lines, we are now going to hand baste right on the two tie sections. So that's gonna be number nine and number 10. So we're gonna do that by getting a little bit closer so I can show you how to hand baste. Doing a basting stitch is a series of going up and down through the fabric. So I have my knotted thread here and I'm gonna go down and then up and then down and then up. It's also known as a running stitch. So now I'm gonna go up a little ways away from that. But what makes it a basting stitch is because it's a temporary stitch that it'll eventually come out. That's why I'm using a contrasting thread. So it'll be easy for me to see. And I'm just doing it right along the lines that I had drawn onto my tie sections, which were pieces nine and 10. So now I'm going up and then I'm going down. And why we're doing this is what's gonna happen, is these are gonna mark where our fold lines are for our tie and it just helps since they're already outlined for us, we know where exactly we're gonna fold it. A faster way to do this, instead of doing it the process that I'm doing, I'm just gonna move this down a bit. Let me come up. All you do is put your needle in, slide it sideways, come out, in and out, and then you pull it. So then you could do several stitches at once. And they don't have to be the same size or perfect. As long as you're just doing it on the line and marking where that fold line is, then you're gonna be good. So I'm just gonna finish it for my tie pieces and then we're gonna move on to step number two. Step number two, stitch center seam of tie sections matching small and large dots. Trim seam, press seam open. So what we're gonna be looking at is the top of each tie section. So that's gonna be in our fabric. And you know this because there's gonna be a notch at the top, and this is gonna be the side that has the three dots also at the top. So here's the top of this tie section and the top of this tie section. They're both with right sides of the fabric facing up. I'm gonna take this one, place it on top. So now the right sides are together, and it's not gonna be straight up and down like this, but it's gonna be more at an angle. So I'm gonna line up the top, and what I wanna do is match up the small and large dots on each side of these tie sections, and I'm gonna pin right along the top. So I'm just gonna get my straight pins here. And you'll notice that the corners kind of stick out from the side of one tie, and they do that on both sides. That is normal. I know if, I, if the dots are lined up because I'm gonna take my straight pin, put it through on one side, right through the center of the dot, flip it over and see if it comes out of my dot on the other side. If it doesn't, I just need to make a minor adjustment, do it again, take a look and then I'm going to pin it. Now when you're pinning to sew a seam, you're now gonna have your pins going in perpendicular to the edge. This is so it's easier to take it out as you're sewing. Once you've pinned just this top edge of the ties, you're gonna take it to your sewing machine and we're gonna stitch that 3 8 inch seam allowance. When stitching my seam allowance, I'm gonna make sure to do a regular width stitch and do back stitches on both ends. So I wanna make sure this does not come out. And again, I'm doing it at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once I finish stitching this, I'm then going to take it to my ironing and press the seams open. Then we'll be able to move on to step number three. For step three, we're going to be applying our fusible interfacing to our tie piece, which is now one big long piece. You can only see half of it here. You have two pieces of fusible interfacing. Here's one, one is definitely skinnier than the other. And then I have another one, which I've already applied to this side. 
So to do this, um, you're going to take the skinnier one and apply it to the skinny end of the tie here. You're going to make sure that the square end goes at the end of the tie end and it should fall right in between your basting stitch. The same thing with the one that goes on this side. They should all just fall right in the middle of that line there. And I'm just going to lay it down and if you've already done one, the diagonal end of the end here is going to overlap with the diagonal end on this side. So right where you have your press seam, they should overlap. And it's the same thing with the one on this side, it's just a little wider. So once you have it lined up, and you're doing this to the wrong side of the tie, so if I was to lift this up, this is my right side of the tie, and I have the wrong side facing up, the side that has the little bubbles on the interfacing, that's the glue, that goes to the wrong side of the tie because it's going to be fused with these little glue bubbles. So if it's nice and soft on top, that is the right side of the interfacing. You want that side facing up towards you. You're going to have your iron at a nice hot temperature. If you're using a synthetic or a delicate fabric, just make sure not to have it too hot because we don't want to damage your fabric but you want it hot enough to melt that glue and to make sure it adheres itself to the wrong side of that tie. I have my pressing cloth on top. I'm going to dampen it, get my iron, and I carefully press it down right on there. And you'll hear it sizzle, which is good, because that means it's steaming up the water and it's getting really hot to adhere to that. You leave it down for about five to six seconds, carefully lift it up, and then move on to the next section. So that's all it takes in order to adhere our fusible interfacing to the wrong set of the tie. Once you have this done, we can then move on to the next step. Step number four reads, turn ends of tie to outside along fold line, stitch as shown. So here we have one end of our tie and it's the right side of the fabric is facing up. Now on both ends, you're gonna have this one long pointy section and then you're going to have a basting stitch that runs along this way, which is kind of perpendicular to the two parallel basting stitches. So this is on both ends, both this end and the smaller end. What this step is telling you to do is you're going to take this point, bring it up, so now you have right side facing right side, and you're going to fold it so that basting stitch is going to run right in the middle of that fold line. So all along this raw edge right here, that's where you're gonna stick your straight pins. This edge is also where we're gonna do our 3 8 inch seam allowance. So this side is gonna stay open. We're just stitching this side. You're gonna do the regular width stitch and do a back stitch on both sides. Once you've stitched both ends like I've done here, here I have the bigger and the smaller one, what you're going to do is you're going to clip off the corners. We have a corner here and a corner here. You can cut off this excess part right here. And you can trim your seam allowance so it's maybe about a quarter of an inch, so it's not quite as wide. So I'm going to do that real fast. And be careful not to cut your stitching line. And then I'm just going to trim this off just a little bit. Once you've done that, and again, you're doing it for both ends, you're gonna flip this right side out, like that, and you can go ahead and press it. So once you've pressed both sides, we're then gonna move on to step number six. Step number six, turn long edges of tie to outside along fold lines, bring right sides together. Stitch leaving an opening between notches to turn. So essentially what it's telling us is we need to match up the two raw edges that are left. Here's the end of my tie. We have a raw edge here and a raw edge here. I have the right side of the tie facing up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this raw edge, I'm gonna fold it over so it matches the top of this one. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this end. And I'm gonna pin along this whole length of this tie. The ends of the tie, both this end and the other end, you can just leave this alone and leave it open. But I'm just gonna go along and pin. Now what we have to remember is between the two notches, which I have here, I have a notch here and a notch here, 
I need to make a special note about this because between these two notches, I'm not gonna sew. So I'm gonna stitch along here, stop, back stitch, and then start again here and stitch to the end. So there's gonna be a back stitch at each end, here and here, and then here and to the other end. This is where we're gonna turn the whole tie right side out. So that's why you, it's very important to leave this open. So to make note of it, what I'm gonna do is at each notch, just these two, I'm gonna take my straight pins, I'm gonna take two of them, and I'm just going to form an X with my pins. Just so I know, so it looks different to me when I'm going along and stitching it. Once I finish pinning this whole length, I'm then gonna take it to my sewing machine and stitch the 3 8 inch seam allowance. And again, that's a regular width stitch with back stitches on both ends because we definitely don't want it to be coming out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish pinning this and then take it to my machine so I can sew it. I'm stitching along my 3 8 inch seam allowance and I'm just getting to my first set of pins where there's a notch. So when I get to it, I'm gonna go ahead and do my back stitch. Just a couple back stitches. They're gonna trim my threads and then restart at the next set of notches. And don't forget to do a back stitch here as well. Okay. And now I'm just going to sew to the very end of my tie. Okay, we're getting close to the end and we're moving on to step number seven, my favorite part. We're turning the whole thing right side out, which I've already started on this end. And once you've turned it right side out, you're then gonna wanna make sure that the seam you just created ends up at the center of the back of the tie. So then your basting stitches, which you have here on the side, end up on the fold because what you're gonna do is then press the tie so it's folded right along those basting stitches. And then this seam ends up right in the middle of the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish turning this right side out for the skinny side of the tie. And then I'm gonna press it and then we're gonna do our last step. Our last step to completing our tie is we need to slip stitch the area between the notches closed. And we do this by hand. And what I did is you're gonna make sure that each side of your opening is tucked under 3 eighths of an inch, which is the seam allowance. And then I stick some straight pins in it in order to hold it closed so it's easier for me to sew it. So from here to here is the opening where I turned everything right side out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my threaded needle with a knot at the end, and this is in my matching thread color. And I'm just gonna grab just a little bit of one side of the opening. I'm gonna pull it through. Tuck this knot on the inside because we don't wanna see that. Once I've done that, I just grab a little bit of the other side. And I like to do it right on the fold. So then it's a little bit more camouflaged in my stitch work here. And then once I've done that, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the other side. So I'm just zigzagging between the two sides until the hole is closed. And you wanna pull tight, but not too tight, because we don't wanna create any puckers. We just wanna make sure that it stays nice and secured. And I'm just gonna do that till my hole is closed and then tie a knot and cut it off. Once you finish this part, you can go ahead and take out all your basting stitches because we no longer need them since the tie is complete and it'll look a lot neater. Maybe run the iron over your tie again and give it a good pressing. And after that, your tie is good to wear or to give as a gift. After removing the basting stitches and giving it one final good press, you'll see we have our completed tie. It really is easy to use the Simplicity Pattern 4762 to create an elegant and sophisticated necktie.